Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to Born Again to Lies Ministries. This year is Bible study this evening, and I give you all give God this evening all the praise, the honor, and the glory for what He is doing and how He is doing it. So I'm just gonna wait here a minute or two. I'm getting ready to get started. Good evening and welcome this evening to Born Again to Rise Ministries. I am Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams of Born Again to Rise Ministries. We are a ministry of healing, deliverance, and reconciliation. We never want to leave you the same way you came. We want healing, we want deliverance, and we want restoration. And restoration is this. It is to restore you back to, first of all, restore you back to God. And once you are restored back to God, then God can restore you back to your heart to your health, your wealth, your family, or whatever it is that you need to be restored back to. Because I remember when I was away from God, I needed to be restored because I grew up in the church, but I was far from the church. Went to church every Sunday, not because I wanted to, but because I had to. And I was so far from God. I sat in the church week in, week out, but I had no relationship with God. And it's all about the relationship. And without relationship, we are absolutely nothing. So I am so grateful that after all the years of my rebellion, glory to God, that God's so fit to continue to watch over me, to keep me, and in due time to heal my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit, man, that I will come to him and I will come to myself and I will begin to hear the voice of God and not just hear the voice of God, begin to do the work that God has ordained to me to do. Because see, you know what? I've come to realize that we can hear something, but we don't quite grasp of what we've heard. We can hear something and it's like, did I hear that? What'd you say again? And so a lot of times, even when we do hear, we can hear something with, the ear of, I have to defend myself with the ear of that. You have no right to say this to me. Or you can't say this to me. Or you don't have the authority to say this to me. And that's what we do as people. We always go moving to defend ourselves. And when you're in Christ, you don't have to defend yourself because it says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. We don't have to retaliate. We don't have to revenge. But God wants to restore everything that was broken. And we all live broken lives. And if you say, well, nothing in my life is broken. No, I beg to differ. We all have some issues. We all have some triggers. We all have some things in our lives that need to be, be that need to be mended and need to be repaired. And some of them could be of our dealings. And some of them don't have to always be of our doings or our own dealings. And what people don't seem to understand also some of these things could very well be a generational curse. But what do you mean a generational curse? Something that your grandma did, your auntie did, your daddy did, your mama did. And people don't seem to understand words. Somebody could have spoken a word over your life while you was in the womb, before you was even in the womb to your mama, your daddy or whatever. And the devil take those words and it's like an attachment. And he attached those words to our lives. And we go through some things in our lives that we don't have a clue where they have come from. And so what I've done with the life that I have today, after I grew up and I began to look at my life, I began to look at some things. And as I began to look at some things, it's like, this is not what I want for myself. And God knows if I ever had children, this is not what I want for my children. So I understood that there were some things in my life that I had to change because those things would have been very damaging to my life as an adult. And I didn't want that to take place and I didn't want that to happen. So we have to learn how to make changes 
in our lives. And change is hard for a lot of people. For a lot of people, change is very hard. But, you know, you get great results when you go to change. Because I know all my life, ooh, Jesus, my truth, y'all, all my life I had been fighting to lose weight. Because I knew what my family genetics were. My daddy's family, them was bony little people. But my mother's family didn't have bony little people. And so therefore, I was always fighting to stay small. And fighting to stay small, it cost me something. And when I say it cost me something, I had to run, I had to jog, I had to walk, I had to diet. I had to do all kind of stuff just to lose weight or either not to gain weight. So it was a change. And that change was very hard. I'm telling you, that change is hard. But it was like, how bad do you want it? And so when the Lord began to speak to me about me, and as I looked at my life, and I looked at the life that I had BC before Christ, it was a no-brainer. It was a game changer. It was a game changer. It's like, Lord, I want you more than my necessary needs. I was willing to give up all of me to get all of him. And that's what we have to learn how to do. Give up your flesh. Give up who you are. Because I'll tell anybody, if you would have known me BC before Christ, you wouldn't have liked me. But why do you say you wouldn't have liked me? Because I didn't like me. So guess what? Because I did not like me, I had to change who I was. I had to change my heart, change my mind, change everything about me when Christ came in. And that's when I understood and I learned that I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And so therefore, it became a little easier because I understood I was a pilgrim. I was a foreigner. I was a royal priesthood. I was a royal ambassador. I was a child of God. I was something special. But when I was in the world, I wasn't nothing special. I didn't like myself, so I wasn't special. And here it is. People are dime a dozen. And that was the way I looked. You was a dime a dozen. Just like I'm a dime a dozen, you was a dime a dozen. But thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. So therefore, that's my truth and I'm going to stick to it. Father, in the name of Jesus, just want to come before you this evening. Just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it continuously, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for coming to uh, your sons and your daughters this evening, Lord God. Holy Spirit, that our lives may be changed, that our hearts may be changed, that if we have a heart of stone, that we have a heart of flesh, Lord God. That we need restoration, that we would accept the healing, we would accept the deliverance, mind, body, soul, and spirit, Lord God. Father, that we would no longer speak evil of anyone or speak evil to anyone, Lord God, but we would speak with the tongue of the learned. We would speak with love, oh God, with that agape love, that love that covers a multitude of sins. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that I would die to myself this evening and all of you and none of me, oh God, that my flesh would not glory, oh God, because my flesh cannot glory. But Father, would you would get all the glory, you would get all the praise, you would get all the honor because it all belongs to you. So let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus, that I have the mind of Christ to deliver your word, that your sons and your daughters will be free and will be delivered in the name of Jesus. As I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. How you doing, cuz? You know, I am just so grateful. And when I say I'm grateful, I am. I've always had an attitude. Well, no, I didn't. I've, I've had an attitude of gratitude for some time now. And you never know how much gratitude you have until Lord have mercy. You you get sick. You get sick and have nobody to come and help you and nobody to be there with you. You get some gratitude real fast. You would get to the point. You would be so grateful just that somebody want to come in the same room where you are. Somebody want to be there. Somebody want to help you. And I have been there where I could not help myself. And people had to come and help me. Come see about me. And that makes me feel good that people think enough about me to come see about me. To be there for me. So glory to God. So you know we have been talking about the last few weeks about let's stay together. And you know when I was looking it up in the uh in the concordance today, I looked it up and I saw that it said 484 times in the Bible that it was saying together. 
And so if you get something that repetitive in the Bible or anywhere for all that matter, it has to have some type of significance and it has to have something about it that people, that the Lord thought enough to say togetherness, togetherness, togetherness talks about unity. And that's what we don't have too much of today. We don't have much unity. We don't have much togetherness. And we have to come to a place in our lives where there's unity. And when you have unity, there's strength in numbers. And everybody don't understand that there's strength in numbers. But there's really strength in numbers because, see, there's some things I can do by myself. There's some things that I can do for myself. And there's some things I just can't do. Why? Because I need help. And that's the same thing with you, you know, you need help. I know my mom was sharing with me the story of a friend of hers and they both, you know, older women up in age. And she said the woman had a child right there, you know, her grown son was right there in the house with her. But instead of her asking her son to help her, she thought she could do what she did in her 80s, which she used to do in maybe her 30s or 40s. She got up on a chair and she reached up high to get something. And when she reached up high to get something, she fell out of the chair. And as a result of her falling, she broke her ankle and she broke her leg. And she has been bedridden. But she had somebody who could have helped her. But she thought she could still do what she was accustomed to doing all these years. We have to learn how to let some stuff go. Learn how to relinquish some things. And I'm learning how to let some things go. I'm learning how to let some people go. I'm learning how to let some things in my mind go. Because all the things that I sometimes think about and all the people who are there, everybody don't mean me any good. Everybody is not about my togetherness. Everybody is not about my well-being. And May was Mental Health Month. And so to me, although they deem May as Mental Health Month, every month ought to be Mental Health Month. Because every day of every year, we go through something. And then I read that they deem June as PTSD Month. Now, PTSD is a little more than that mental health, but it still deals with your mind. And the Bible says, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if we're not together with the mind of Christ, guess what? We got the mind of the devil. And so we need the mind of Christ. We need to get it together, get the mind of Christ so we could do the work that God has ordained us to do. We all have a purpose. There's a plan. There's a destiny. There's a legacy for all of us. Though we can't do it being separated. So when we come together, let's stay together. Whether times are good or bad, happy or sad, you got to learn how to stay together. But the first sign of trouble, and trust me, trouble's going to come knocking at your door. And it's going to come unannounced. And the first time it happens, what do we do? We seek a bailout plan. We start running. And that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not to run. We are to stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. We are to stand still and deal with the problem. But oftentimes we don't deal with the problem. The problem have a tendency to deal with us. Because we allow the problem to choke us. We allow that problem to get in our hearts and get in our minds. Whereas we once was joyful. We once was happy. We once was full of, uh, full of faith and full of hope. We allow one trouble to come in. Oh, bring so much ugliness into our hearts and into our minds that it sucks the life out of you and I. And after it sucks the life out of us, it gives us a hard heart that nobody can get in and you can't seem to get out. And all of a sudden, you wonder why you're sick. You wonder why you're afflicted. You wonder why you're dying. You wonder why you can't get up and shake that bad report that the doctor has given you. You can't shake it because you've walked away from your first love. You've walked away from God. You said, I don't need this anymore because if he was there, I wouldn't be going through this. No, he was always there. But there's a saying that says, when you're in a test, the teacher is silent because when you're test taking, the whole room's supposed to be silent. Why? So you can put your thinking cap on. Why? Because you want to be able to 
hear clearly. You want to be able to see clearly. But if everything is flying and everybody's talking, guess what? You're not listening. You're not paying attention. But that's why I say, cast all your cares upon him and leave them there. And we got to toss some stuff aside. Toss some stuff away. And when we toss that stuff aside and we toss that stuff away, then we leave room for the Holy Spirit to come in and to gather with us. To become that royal priesthood. To become that peculiar person. To become, glory to God, all that God wants for you and I. And that's what we want to do. We want to become that one. You know, you want to be that girl. You want to be that guy. And you know, when people get married, you know, that's my boo thing. You know, that's my babe there. And guess what? Because they got their relationship, they together. And if they keep communicating, no matter good or bad, happy or sad, guess what? They're going to always be that boo thing. Because, see, you just not in that boo thing with a smooth sailor. No, be that boo thing with the road get rough and things get rocky. Because, see, if you bail out at the time and get rocky and you go to look to the green, the green grass over the other pasture, that grass is liable to be so rotten and be so brown. That it looked like it was green, but then all of a sudden that grass was like, man, that's not even grass. That ain't nothing but some weeds. And that's what life would do. It would make you think one thing, that it's not what you think it is. And that's where we got to learn how to get our thoughts together. And here it is. When you finally get your thoughts together, guess what? You can live in a whole new world. So many doors will open up for you that it was like, wow. It's like you're going through open door at the open door at the open door at the open door. And it's like, whoa. And that's the thing about it is God wants to blow your mind. But see, God cannot blow your mind if you not listening. And I remember last year, God said it was going to be big. And I'm like, big. Yes, he deals with me a lot of acronyms. And the big was the better introduction to God. And truly, he has given me a better introduction to him. And I'm telling you, it has opened up my mind. It has opened up my eyes. It has opened up my heart. And it has opened up my life to so many things. And that's just like when I come here and I do this, and when I do this, Every time there's that message, that message comes to let me know, this is your next assignment, girlfriend. This is the next thing I want you to do because he tells me and I'm just like, no, 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 no. But he gives me these assignments through the messages that he gives me. And when he gives me these assignments, it gives me a peace and it gives me a calm every time I sit here because sometimes I sit here and it's like, I can't do this. And then sometimes I'm just like, I won't do this, but I have no choice but to do this. Why? Because I love God with all my heart, my mind, my soul, and my strength. And I love my neighbor as myself and because I love God just like that. Whatever it is that God asks me to do, even when I don't think that I can do it, I know that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But well, how can you say that? Because with like let's stay together I stay with God and God stays with me and it's not me that's doing the work it's the God in me it's the God in you that does the work and we have to learn how to say God I need you God come in and join me and when we get joined with the Holy Spirit there's nothing absolutely nothing that we cannot do in him. And so I thank God that it's nothing that I'm doing, but it's what the Holy Spirit is doing. And he just wants a vessel. So will you be that vessel today? When things get a little rocky and things are a little turbulence and a little turbulent, don't bail out. Don't go jumping. Don't go running. Stay with God and watch what's going to happen. Because guess what? All the glory belongs to God anyway. And when all the glory belongs to God and you become that willing vessel that he wants to use, can you say soar? Can you say flying higher than an eagle? Can you say sickness? Gone. Poverty. Gone. Insufficiency. Lack gone so many things will be gone 
If you're drunk, alcoholism, drug addiction, gone. Hormones of prostitution, gone. Adultery, lust, lying, stealing, cheating, gone. All because you decide to walk with God. And God says, there's no good thing I will withhold from you if you walk up right before me. And that's what he wants us to do. Walk up right before him. That's just like you're getting on a ladder. And as you're going on, getting that ladder, this is the floor. This is your foundation. You just put the ladder on the floor. Then you're going to pull it up. And by the time you pull that ladder up, you're going to pull it up and it's going to get to the height of where it's going. Whether it's a two-foot ladder, three-foot ladder, four-foot ladder, six-foot ladder, eight-foot ladder, ten-foot ladder. You're on that ladder and as you get on that ladder, you're going to steps. You're going to steps. You're going to steps. You're going to steps till you get where you need to be for that appointed time. And that's how we are walking with Christ. We're going through steps. We're going through steps. We're going through steps. Because see, when you come into Christ, we start off as that little baby. And we start off with a baby. You know, the baby needs that. They need that. Uh, what is that stuff called? They need the simulac or whatever the milk is called. They need to, that milk. And once they get on that milk and they start it growing, then all of a sudden the mother begins to wean them off of the milk. And then she started introducing them to other foods that they can that they can, you know, begin to uh, swallow because it's like that Paris food. And then all of a sudden at this Paris, and then all of a sudden they started introducing them to another food, which is a little gentle, little soft food. And then after they started introducing them to the soft food, then they started getting more teeth in their mouth. Then they get them to the little crunchy. And after they get them to the crunchy, then all of a sudden it's a solid food. And that's the same way our walk is with Christ. We get that little introduction. And God said, there's my son, there's my daughter, come Come on. And as we begin to grow, we keep growing, we keep growing, keep going up that ladder, keep going up that ladder, keep going up that ladder. And next thing you know, you begin to get to the point you're eating solid food. You was once that baby. You was once eating, uh, drinking the, the simulac, having the having the little, uh, what is that? Having the little oatmeal or having the little cream of wheat. Then all of a sudden you begin to give me a steak because I'm ready to chew it up. I got a little fat on this thing, but I'm going to chew the fat with you too because all of a sudden I know what I'm capable of doing. I know that I can do all things with Christ which strengthens me. I know that I'm going to keep this thing together when the world say I ought to be falling apart. Why? Because I'm staying together with God. And because I'm staying with God, God is staying with me because he told me he's going to never leave me nor forsake me. So guess what? I'm trusting him at his word because he said all I needed was the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. And that mustard seed is so small that if you drop it on the floor, you won't be able to find it. I drop it on the floor. God knows you're dropping some carpet. You get to look in it. Where did that thing go? What? And you're going to get a little frustrated. Why? Because you can't find it. The way you, when you get with your faith, Lord, I just found my faith. There's that mustard seed. And if I lost it right there, I'm going to come, I'm going to repent, and you're going to give me some more faith. And I'm going to pick myself up, I'm going to dust myself off, and I'm going to allow you to do what you say you're going to do with me. Because I have surrendered all that I am to you. And that's the way God wants our lives to be. Whatever it is that's going on with you, all he wants is a surrendered soul. And when he gets that surrendered soul and that surrendered vessel, my God, my God, my God, you can do all things but fail. And you know, we got to get to the point where certain words become repetitive. Like I said, they were together. 484 times all the way from the book of Genesis all the way back to the book of Revelations because somewhere between Genesis and Revelations we fell off you know the people fell off and then somewhere along the line some of them came together and that's what it's all about some of us sometimes we fall off and when we fall off the wagon guess what we got to get back on because that's just like a person who who uh, go through the AA they go through the AA meetings and when they go through the AA they get these little coins oh excuse me there's that little one what what is that thing it is a one-year coin that's just the beginning. Then depending on how long they've been in, there may be a 25-year coin. Long as they don't go back to their old habits. See, 
Don't go back to your old habits. Don't be like the dog that goes back to its vomit. Long as we don't go back to those old habits, we keep growing. We keep going up. That person in AA, they keep going up higher. That person in Narcotics Anonymous, they may come in today and, you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. And so therefore, you give them five or six years, they liable to be standing up there teaching a meeting. They liable to say, well, my name is so-and-so. I have come to Narcotics of Anonymous, but today this is my own chapter. I'm here today to help you. And that's what happens sometimes. We can get a testimony that can then begin to help our brothers and our, bro and our sisters. And that's what it's all about. It is about that if I stay with God and God stays with me, we can begin to build. And once we begin to build, we can be able to then go out and help somebody else. But see, if I don't do anything, I don't know anything, I don't feed my spirit, I don't feed my soulish man, I cannot help you and you cannot help me. Why? Because I'm empty inside. My soul man is empty. And because I'm empty, I have nothing to deposit or nothing to distribute to you. And what we're supposed to be as children of God, a child of God, we are supposed to be distribution centers. And if I cannot distribute to you what's in me, guess what? There's nothing for me to give and there's nothing for you to receive. So therefore, I want you to receive. We need you to receive because as you receive and you begin to grow and grow and grow, guess what? Then you go out and you help somebody. You go out and do for somebody. You go and uplift somebody. That's what it's all about. That's part of the meat in the kingdom of God. Because I was sharing with my spouse in the house the other day that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, teach a man a fish, he can eat for life. Why? Because he's going to keep fishing and keep fishing and keep fishing. I was listening one day. I love to listen to motivational uh, motivational um, quotes. And I love motivational on YouTube because it inspires me. It tells me it's time to get up, girl. It's time to do some things. It's time to get your mind set together. And I was listening one day to a Steve Harvey. You know, Steve Harvey was talking about how he used to live in his car, how he had no place to lay his head. But you can look at Steve Harvey today and see he can lay his head any way he want to lay his head and it doesn't matter how much it costs. And here it is, he don't have not one house, but he got several houses but here it is his story was he was poor he was what he said he was poor he was poor and poor is miss oh, uh, miss over opportunities and he missed over some opportunities and here it is he living in his car but he liked fish and he had a fishing pole and he would take it go to a river, go to a lake, and he would fish. And he said he always carried charcoal and stuff in his car. Because after he would catch the fish, he would go to a park. And the, a lot of the parks had those charcoal grills in the park. And he would eat his catch. But guess what? He don't even have to now cook his own food today, I'm quite sure, not unless he want to. If he don't want to cook, guess what? He can go eat any way he want to eat. Take his family and eat any way they want to eat. But all we got to do is change our hearts and change our minds and change our strategy. And the Holy Spirit is a strategist, just like the devil is a strategist. But God has given us the tools to take and annihilate him, to kick his honey that he doesn't have to kick ours. And that's what it's all about overcoming, be more than a conqueror. And so therefore, we got to be together. And our humanists have a tendency to walk away from relationships that can build us up, to grow us up, or cause somebody some time to walk away from God. And so many people in their relationships have walked away from Christ. I know I had this family. I had witnessed to this family. And they were excited about Christ. The, the wife, the children, but the husband wasn't. And because he felt he was the breadwinner, he told them, you can't have a relationship with her anymore. And I was like, really? But guess what? She stopped the relationship. And you know, in the beginning, her children were so excited about the things of Christ 
We used to do Bible study on the phone years ago because this was before Zoom and all this other stuff. We used to do Bible studies and then the kids would sit down with their moms and they would find characters in the Bible and they used to act the characters out. And this mom, she had three children and they would act it out. And so by the time I would talk to him again, Miss Dumper, guess what we did? But the father didn't like it. He wasn't the natural father, but he still didn't like it. And he stopped the entire family. He stopped the entire family from having a relationship with me. But guess what, y'all? The seed was planted. The Lord had me to give the whole family a Bible, even him. I don't know what he did with his, but I knew at the time what they did with theirs. And at one point, they were going to church. But then at another point, he stopped the family from even going to church. But the children are now grown and they have their own families. I don't know what they're doing. I haven't seen them. I haven't heard from them. But all we got to do is plant the seed. And see, I could not worry about what that father did or what he did not do or how he did it. That was his home. And at the end of the day, he's going to have to answer to God how he misused his family. But they should have took a stand, but they didn't. I don't know if it was fear. I don't know what it was. But God said, fear not. Lo, I am always with you. God is always with us. And you know, the other night I was coming home, I had been in, uh, in the DMV. I've been in, um, I've been spending some time with my parents. Because my parents are older. And I try to see them when I can. And so when I was coming home, the warfare, oh, Jesus, the warfare was so strong. And I had took communion, praying, God, that you give me traveling mercies. I don't always know why God does what he does. But I was praying, God, that you would give me traveling mercies. I had to stay together with God, y'all. Because I had gotten so much pain that I could hardly put my foot on the accelerator to drive. And I kept pleading the blood of Jesus because there's still power in the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. And I got to the point I was just, oh, God, please. Then all of a sudden, I felt my body was just like all these knots was happening. I got all these knots going on. Then I got all this pain going on. And I'm like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I was driving and crying. God, in the name of Jesus. Then I had to stop. The pain was so bad, I had to stop. And I had, God, I need you. Because I didn't know if I was going to get home. And I was in the middle of nowhere. And it was like, God, I need to get home. And I was in so much pain. And all I could do was plead the blood of Jesus. And I got out of my car. And I just began to massage my leg. I began to take my shoe off. And I just began to cry out to God in the middle of a parking lot. Because I needed him, y'all. Not that I didn't have him in the car. But I needed some relief. And I'm telling you, he gave me what I needed. Why? Because I have a relationship with my heavenly father. And I am so grateful that, that he took the pain away. I mean, because I thought I was going to drive myself to the hospital. The pain was just that bad. And I told him I wasn't going to no hospital. And I told the devil, you're going to get your foul, filthy hands off my body because I belong to God. And I know that there's some things that God wants me to do. And guess what? Some things are so much bigger than I am. But you know, God is a good God and he is worthy to be praised. And you know, there's a scripture this evening that um, God gave me. This one is out of the Good News Translation and it's Amos 3.3. 3. And it's a rhetorical question. And it's a question that rhetorical means just this. Rhetorical is asked merely for the effect of no answer expected. It's a lot to ponder. It's a lot to think about. And it's Amos 3.3 3 out of the Good News Translation. Do two people start traveling together without arranging to meet? Because, see, just think about it. A man or woman going on a trip. One is in one state and another one is in another state. One is in Africa and the other one is in Europe. But they're going to meet in the United States. So they're starting at two separate points. And because they started at two separate points, they said, we're going to leave at such and such a time. So you get your flight 
I get my flight. We're going to get everything in order and we're going to meet in the United States in such and such a state on this day. So they begin to make these plans. They begin to get up everything that they need. They get their passports. They get their vaccinations. They get whatever it is that they need because they're coming all the way across the water and they both are in two separate states. And what they also do is from way back on the other side, they have gotten their hotel that they're going to stay in. They have gotten their uh, trans mode of transportation, whether it may be a car or be a, a limousine, whatever it is. They have already got their mode of transportation that they're going to leave from the airport on. Why? Because they have came into the agreement. Oh, why? Because they've got on, why they say, what, maybe WhatsApp. They got on social media. They got on the telephone. They got together and they made plans. They made plans that because we are agreeing, we're going to do this thing. We're going to carry this thing out. And because we're going to carry it out, I'm going to see you on the other side. And that's what we have to do with the body of Christ. Make it up in your mind that I'm going to walk this thing out for eternal life. Because that's what it's all about in the body of Christ. We're walking out our lives for eternal life. We're not walking out our lives for we can look cute and say, oh, girl, look at me. Dude, you know what? You better holler at a girl. You know what I'm saying? That's not why we're doing what we're doing. We're doing because we know that Jesus said one day to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So what do you do? You got to get yourself on that firm foundation. You got to get on that ladder, y'all. And you got to start on that two foot, get to that three foot, get to that four foot, that six foot, that eight foot, that 10 foot, that 12 foot. We got to keep on climbing Jacob's ladder. We got to keep on climbing, y'all. But some people get to a certain place and all they do is stop. Now, you know, I walked down the aisle and I gave my life to the Lord. You know, they asked me if I want to do the ABCs. Do I want to accept Christ as my personal Savior? Do I believe that he died for me? He felt rose on the third day. And then do I confess my sins unto God? Well, I did all that. Okay, well, after you did all that, what else you going to do? Well, you know, after I did all I ain't got to do nothing else. Yes, you do. It's time to find out what it says in the word of God. Get in the word-filled church. Join the church. Join the church. Once you get in the church, then all of a sudden you find out who can you connect to? Who can you come together with? Who can be your BFF in God's house is it's going to teach you? You don't want the same type of person. See, you know what? I'm going to be for real, for real. In God's house, if they would have had a a lush, if they would have had somebody who was a whoremonger and they still wasn't quite saved, they couldn't have been my friend because we would have got to talking about, girl, let me tell you. And next thing you know, God would have been cleaning out the picture and we would have been right back where we started from, probably back in the nightclubs and everything else. But see, that wasn't the type of person that you're supposed to go and find. You're supposed to get with that one who is that rooted and grounded one. See, and that's the thing about it, whose roots are going down deep, you know. That he is that tree roots have gone down so deep, even when the rain comes, even when the winds come, they still stand it. Oh, it's going to blow. It's going to bob. It's going to bend a little bit. But guess what? It's not going to fall. It's not going to fall. And that's the way we have to be. We're going to bob a little bit. We're going to weave a little bit. We're going to breeze a little bit and everything. But we're not to fall. Well, with every wind and every doctrine, just because such and such says this, such and such says that. Because I'm telling you, I've been in some churches where people are oh, I don't need you sitting beside. I'm like, what? And I'm looking like, oh, Jesus. But guess what? I could have been hurt and I could have been offended. What is that, my church hurt? Girl, please, ain't no such thing of church hurt. We are the church of Jesus Christ. Ain't no building hurting you. But see, God had to teach me all those things. Because see, sometimes that's, that's a bailout plan for some people. That's a bailout plan. And here it is. It's like, you know what? I've had all kinds of things that happen to me in the church. But because this place, God sends me to different churches. Some people will get in the church and they will stay there till they die. God sends me as a help. He told me I am a help. I am a help and I am a servant. So what do I do? I go to the church that he tells me to go to. Why? Because I help. And when I help and I put my hands to a good work and do what he ordained me to do, he takes care of me. He takes care of me. And I'll tell anybody, I have not worked for a paycheck since 2009. God takes care of me. Have I missed any meals? No, indeed. Have I missed anything? No, indeed. 
Why? Because God takes care of me. And that's the thing we have to understand. If God is your confidant, God is your great physician, God is your all in all, he takes care of you. And there's no need to cry, well, Jesus, when you going to come through? Oh, Jesus, you know. No. How can two walk together unless they're agreed? I agree that Jesus is Lord a long time ago. It's been, what, 33 years now that I agreed that Jesus is Lord? And there's power in agreement. There's power in agreement. And in the Message Bible, it says, do two people walk hand in hand if they aren't going to the same place? Can you imagine all of a sudden, we walking down the street, we hand in hand. But therefore, that's right, I'm going to the left and you're going to go to the right, but we're going to stay hand in hand. We're not stretch arms strong. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to understand we're going to stay together. Whether times are good or bad, happy or sad, we're going to stay together. And that's the only way you can go the same direction. I'm telling you, that's the only way people will stay out of divorce court too. Whether times are good or bad, happy or sad. And you know what? I'm going to put my business out there. People say, well, for adultery, you can get a divorce. Of course you can. But guess what? If you love them, why? Because one thing I've come to realize and understand, God knew that he or she was going to mess up. Why do you think in the marriage vows, duh, it says for good or bad? Uh, what is that thing? Uh, sickness, any health, good or bad? Better for worse? Yeah, better for worse. We all got issues. Hers just came out before yours. His just came out before yours. So what? Work it out. Work it out. But no, the grass is green on the other side. And I want some greener grass. I told you it's weeds, y'all. It thought it was grass. It was weeds. And weeds can grow through anything. And weeds was something that would get on your nerves. You go trying to cut a weed. It's going to lay down and that thing will about beep, spring right back there. A weed is sickening. Then you got to go get some reinforcement for the weed. You got to then go buy some weed killer because guess what? He keep bringing his friends with him. Because what a weed does, a weed drops seeds. And all of a sudden, when you think you got grass, you got a yard full of weeds. Don't have no grass nowhere. We got to learn how to stay together. Good or bad, happy or sad. Good times or bad times. Because see, trouble always come knocking at your door. One thing I've learned about trouble, trouble does not announce itself. Trouble is unannounced. All of a sudden, car needs some new brakes. Car needs some new shoes. Car needs some oil. Your money is low. Everything looking funny. Then all of a sudden, you get a hole in the roof. Then you ain't got enough money for the mortgage. You're living from hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. I'm going to tell you something. That there, what I just spoke of, that's when you need God more. That is not the time to say, God, you just don't work. That is not the time to say, God, I know you, please. No. I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call my girlfriend. I'm going to call my boyfriend. I'm going to call somebody to ask for help. God said, you have not because you ask not. And he didn't tell you go asking your mother. He didn't tell you go asking your father. Years ago, my husband and I, we was buying our very first house. We thought we needed help. You heard me, the emphasis. We thought we needed help. So we went out reaching out to a family member. I'm talking about a family member who had buku money running out the yang yang. Asked them for a low amount of money. You know what they said? No. Now, I could have but mean, nasty, and shrewd. Because I had some information hanging over their head that could have been detrimental to their life. But guess what? I kept my mouth shut. And just like that, the money we needed came in just like that. 
And I was like, wow. That's what God wants to do for us. Wow. He wants us to live in the wow. But when we don't have the wisdom of Christ, you act like you got it. You act like you know it. But soon as the wind blow, soon as you bend a little, soon as a storm comes, your bailout plan is in action. No, that's not Christ. That's like a man who built his tree. He's built his house on the sand. And one thing about the sand, sand particles, it blows. The wind comes, sand, it blows. You go to the beach and you get sand on your foot. It gets stuck on your feet. So it leaves the beach. And it comes wherever you are. And you got to keep wiping it off till it's all gone. And that's how some of our lives are. We keep wiping and keep wiping and keep wiping. God ain't told you keep wiping. He said, stand still and see the glory of the Lord. New Living Translation said, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? No, you cannot walk together without, you have to learn how to agree. We have to learn how to agree that, you know what? We're having some problems. We're having some difficulties. But we're going to sit down here, we're going to work this thing out. And when you sit down and you begin to work things out, guess what? Things begin to work out for you. But if you decide that every time something happens, you ain't going to talk to me like that. You're not going to say this to me. And it don't have to be anything bad either. It's just that you got so much pride, so much haughtiness that you don't want to listen. So nobody can speak to you. Nobody can speak in your ear. Nobody can mentor you. Nobody can help you. Because see, the Bible clearly states the older women should be able to help the younger women. Wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding because wisdom is a principal thing. But see, every older woman is not a wise woman either. Because there are some older women and some women of age, they still tear their house down. And when they tear their house down, they tear you down too. Because see, hurt people hurt people. And one thing I've come to realize over the years that bitter old women, oh Jesus, bitter old people, oh Lord have mercy. They're horrible. They're horrible. And they're horrible because something has happened in their past that made them bitter as wormwood. And they don't want nothing or nobody to be happy because they're not happy. And they would do whatever it takes to make their children, their sons, their daughters, their grandchildren, their neighbors, whoever will listen to them. They will make them unhappy. And everybody will be unhappy together because they, they would think that's the way we're supposed to be. But that's not the way God has made us. That is not the way God has employed us. Because happy is he who walks with the Lord. Happy. Agape love is one who walks with God. But if you have love for nobody, for just certain people, that's not of God. Because see, how can you say you love God? When you hate that which you have already seen. That's not of God. And we have to learn how to get our hearts and get our minds right. Because see, so many people is going to be duped at the end of the day. And you know, today I've just been talking. Just talking. Just talking. But we need to learn how to stay together. We have to learn how to go down victory lane. We have to learn how to be victorious in all that we do. Not some things, but everything. And you know, because of victory, this here is Genesis 5.22 at the New Living Translation. And it's Enoch's relationship with God. And it says in Genesis, let's see. I'm going to tell you what it's like to have to get fellowship with God, togetherness. This is, I'm going to start at Genesis. I'm going to start at verse 21. Genesis 5 and 21. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. 65 years old, just became a father. After the birth of 
Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. So we're talking about right now 365 years that he lived in close fellowship with God. Let's stay together, y'all. 365 years, we don't live like that anymore. But guess what? He stayed with God. And he had other sons and daughters. And this here is where it comes in at. Enoch lived 365 years. And here it is. We get to screaming sometimes about 365 days because we don't like the weather. We don't like the winds. We don't like the rains. We don't like the storms. We don't like the trials. We don't like the tribulations. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too this. It's too that. And some people literally complain. 365 days out of a year because that's all we get. Not unless it's leap year, you get 366. But Enoch lived 365, 365. You know what? When I, oh, Holy Spirit, I hear you. Three, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Six, at the end of the sixth day, it was finished. God rested. Five, the grace of God. There you go. Holy Spirit just downloaded. The Holy Spirit was there. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. It was finished. And it was God's grace. And that's what Enoch received. Because verse number 24, 524. Walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. Because God took him. Why? He was such an honorable man, such a man of character, such a man of noble cause, such a man of integrity. 365 years. And we can't even get 365 days. Because we got a right here. We got a right there. And because it's my prerogative. <laughs> and I'm going to do what I want to do. Why? Because I want to do it when I want to do it. I want to say it when I want to say it. And I want to have it when I want to have it. And that's what we do. And with all that, God is not pleased with you and I. And we got to learn how to get some things together for God will be pleased with us. But we can walk with him that he can be so well pleased that he said, come on up, my son. Come on up, my daughter. I got need of you. I need you to go to this corner. I need you to go there. And see, some people be waiting on the husband for all, uh, waiting on a wife for all that matter. But guess what? You ain't going to get no husband or no wife if you mean, nasty, bitter, jealous, and all this other stuff, hateful, or envy, strife, and malice, and oh, Lord, and gossiping and all that stuff, and slander. You ain't going to get no God-fearing man. You ain't going to get no God-fearing woman because that's not the characteristics of God. And you may get yourself a man because you choose him and he choose you. And then all of a sudden you wonder why you have hell on earth when God said we can have heaven on earth because that was your choice. That was your choice. And guess what? God, one thing I learned about him, he has given each and every one of us a free will. Free will. Free will. Love it or leave it. Free will. It's up to you. It's up to me. Love it or leave it. And so therefore, guess what? I choose to love the Lord my God with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. And guess what? It has paid off well for me. I'm not loving God just because of what God can do for me. No. No. Because see, I want to be like Enoch one day, y'all. <laughs> I want God to be so well pleased with me. He said, come on, girl. And girl, he's going to be ready. You know, when people get sick, they be trying to hold on to their loved ones. But when it's their time, it's their time. It's the end of their season. And it ain't a thing you can do about it. It's not a thing I can do about it. Yes, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and God gave him more time. And I just believe because Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, God gave him more time. That God wanted Hezekiah to come to him and pray to him. Maybe Hezekiah wasn't praying as he should have. And he had to get Hezekiah's attention. So therefore, it was like, Hezekiah, I really need you to pray. Hezekiah, because right now you have become prey to the things of the world, but I will do for you what you're supposed to be doing all along. And he extended Hezekiah's life. And I just believe that if our life is where it's supposed to be in God, he ain't got to pick no flower, y'all. He picked the flower. He created the flowers. What did he need to pick what he created? When our day is done, our day is done. And we have to accept that. And our loved ones have to accept sometimes we've suffered too long. Some of us, you know, suffer in silence. 
Or he wasn't sick. She wasn't sick. You don't know what was going on internally. Because see, even Christians got that internal thing going on. That could be so much pride sometimes that they don't want to share with anybody because they think if I tell somebody, somebody going to think I'm weak. Somebody going to think that because I'm a Christian, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. No, it's not that you're not where you're supposed to be. But guess what? I don't care whether you're Christian or otherwise. We all need help. We all have issues. We all have come short of God's glory. But we all have to say, God, I need you. God, I can't do this thing by myself. God, I'm suffering internally. God, I got some things that's going on that I cannot give up on my own. Because see, what God wants us to do, he wants to have your truth and he wants to have my truth. And we can sit there, I can hide from you and you can hide from me. But guess what? God wants our truth. God wants to know that there's something wrong with you, daughter. There's something wrong with you, son. But we got to give that thing to him. Because he's not going to make us do nothing we don't want to do. But you have to freely you give, freely you receive. And everything that I find out that I don't like within me, I'm giving that thing up quick. Because I don't want nothing to weigh me down. I don't want anything to make me, ooh, heavy? No. Give it up. You got to give it up. And when you give it up, God said, hey, I'm going to take some of that weight up off you. But all we want to do is have it our way. Because Burger King said so. I'm the king of this castle. And see, back in the day, B.C., before Christ, I used to say back in the day, my son grown now, but I tell you, back in the day when he was a little boy, little baby boy, if mama ain't happy, nobody else going to be happy up in this campsite. And that's the way it was. If y'all can't make me happy, I'm going, ooh, but it said, guess what? A cantankerous woman, she tears her house down. She tears her house down. And a man or woman with no power of agreement, they tear their house down. But when you come together and you agree together, you may not agree for this point, but guess what? There's a point of view that I have. There's a point of view that you have. And when we bring that point of view together and we purpose in our hearts, purpose in our stuff, that we're going to take and get a new approach to that thing. And we know that victory is around the other side. It may not be at the back door. But you come through the front door, you go through that open door, you find out victory is right there. And it was waiting for you. And when you get to the victory, God opens up the window of heaven. So much, so much, so much that there's not room for you or I to receive. He opens it up. He opens doors that no man can close. And he shuts doors that no man can open. And that's what he wants to do for us. He wants to open up some things that nobody can open but you. He wants to shut some things that nobody can shut them but him. Because sometimes we can open up doors that has no business being opened in our lives. But there's power in agreement. How can two walk together unless they agree? It's time to stay together. It's time because see this world is opening up. And because the world is opening up, there's a lot of friction. People have been separated too long. So much is going on in people's lives and people's hearts and in people's minds and churches have been closed. And they're just like crabs. Still pulling down. Still pulling down. Still pulling down. But if you just begin to come together, come unto me, all you heavy burden and heavy laden. God said, I will give you rest. I will give you everything that you need. But he needs you to come. Come unto him today. Today is your opportunity. Today is your time to come. And God will give you everything that you need. You may be, well, I'm new at this. That's okay. We're here. If you need some help, reach out on Born Again to Rise Ministries. Whatever question you may have, we get it answered. Whatever you may need, we'll get it done. Because see, this year's a ministry of healing, deliverance, and reconciliation. If there's a prayer request, leave it at Born Again to Rise Ministries. We will get back with you. Because see, I am also an intercessor. And one thing that I've learned over the years, intercession is not for me. It is for the other person. But who is the other person? You are. 
your family, your descendants, they're the other people. And I come against anything and everything that will try to tell you that you're not who God says you are. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You are a son and daughter of Abraham. You are Sarah's daughter. You have been made to thrive, not just to exist. You have purpose. You have destiny. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but God has given you the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And it's time to you for you to stop being passive, stop being timid, stop being fearful. I don't know who I'm talking to this evening, but God said it's time to stop and it's time to let it go. And it's time to allow him to come in. It's time for you to joint heirs with Christ. It's time. Because see, you've walked in your way, you've walked in your direction much too long. God said, it's your time, it's your season. This is a new day, this is a new season. And God has been talking to you. God has been calling you for quite some time. But see, you're still waiting on everybody else. Weight broke the wagon down. Weight will break you down. Weight will kill. Wait no longer. Today is your time. Today is the opportunity to A, B, C. Accept, believe, and confess. That Jesus is Lord. If you need to repent, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn from them. I believe that you still love me and I love you. And I thank you for receiving me in the name of Jesus. It's not hard. And after you've said that and after you've done that, guess what? Those who were there, leave them back there. It's time to move forward. It's time to move on. It's your time. It's your season. It is time to have a B-I-G experience. A better introduction to God. It's your time. It's your season. God bless you. God bless you. And before I leave, I want to give a quick testimony. I was on here this time last week. And I guess maybe about a half hour after I went off, I had got a... Um, Got a text. This young lady, I have been praying for her. She, she started coming on. I've been over here now for, what, two and a half years. And she came on when I first started Bible study. And she had some things going on and she asked me what I pray. And I prayed for her after Bible study was over one Tuesday morning. And I began to pray and intercede on behalf of her and her husband. She was bearing. And she sent me a text last Thursday evening. She said, Mama, thank you. She's from another country. She said, I am now pregnant. She could not have children. But here it is. I told her, believe, sweetheart, believe. And I put her on the altar. I put her husband on the altar. And I believed God for her. That God would open up her womb and she would bear children. And she let me know last Thursday that she is pregnant. I'm telling you, power of agreement. Let's stay together. Don't matter who try to take you away from God. When they try to take you from God, they want to call you all kind of names. Let you know that is not your kind of people. That is not your kind of crowd. That is not your association. They are not walking with God. Let's stay together. To God be the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, O oh God, binding up the hands of the enemy. We bind up Satan in the name of Jesus, that there's no good thing, Lord God, that you will withhold from us, that if we walk up right before you, that devil will have no place, he have no dominion, he has no authority over us, over our minds, over our sons, our daughters, nieces, nephews, over our siblings, our parents, if they're still alive, O oh God. Father, that you will put walls of fire, mountains of fire, Lord God, mountains of Fire, Lord God, all around us, oh God, that the gates of hell would not prevail upon us, oh God. Father, that we would cover ourselves from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet with the word of God, with the armor of God, with the breastplate of salvation, oh God, with the helmet of salvation, oh God, with the breastplate of uh, righteousness, oh God, with the shield of faith, oh God, which is your word. As we shot our feet, oh God, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, oh God, and as we will prepare ourselves, oh God, for the end of this day, oh God, that it may be the end of this day, but it's not the end of our 
our wives, oh God, because you would keep us, oh God, in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on thee. That if there's not perfect peace, oh God, we plead the blood of Jesus, that we have the mind of Christ, that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds as we make our requests being made unknown to you, God. As we pray, oh God, we pray for world peace, we pray for world leadership, we pray for this nation, we pray for this world, oh God, because you said that the government is upon your shoulders. So Holy Spirit, have your way, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we would live that agape kind of love in the name of jesus and we would live as your sons and daughters of almighty god we will experience heaven on earth in spite of what we see in this world and we be that salt of the earth oh god we will not we will not we will not lose our flavor because salt is a preservative god bless each and every one of you they will come back at a later date if you miss me you can always go on the youtube subscribe to our youtube channel deborah smith adams and you will pick them up there and we just thank god for you we thank god for what you're doing in your life i thank god for what he's doing in my life god bless each and every one of you have a blessed safe and a prosperous evening God bless you. I will not be here on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock on June the 22nd, 2020. Because even in spite of what I do here, I still enjoy doing community service. And I will be doing community service with my church as we do doing even during this time here we still love it on our seniors we can't get them in a room like we used to but we still know have we have come up with a different idea and a different strategy to still feed our seniors during this time so i thank god that i will be with the seniors next tuesday morning do a community service. So I thank God for what he's doing and how he's going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Good night.